ICL implantation is one of the most fun and enjoyable surgeries that we do, but it can be a stressful operation and actually the part of the operation that stresses me out the most is always injecting the lens. When you inject the lens into the eye, you hold your breath for a moment because you want the lens just to emerge beautifully and smoothly and open up and unfold on its own so that you can tuck the haptics and be done. But always when I'm injecting the lens, I'm kind of crossing my fingers and hoping it opens up in that beautiful way. And usually it does, but not always. And I think that there are things that you can do and things that you should not do that can ensure the lens behaves in the proper way. And I want to illustrate this concept with two examples from a patient that I operated on last week, the right and left eye, which sort of illustrates the concepts. So this is the first eye. She's having ICL in our office-based operating environment. This is a mid-40s high myope with astigmatism. And you'll notice characteristic for many of these patients, here she is on the operating room table poorly dilated and we see that all the time that you have these sort of middle-aged high myopes and the pupil is not nearly so dilated as you would like and i'm not sure why that is but we observe it all the time i make two paracentesis always even though i rarely use them and i'm backstopping the eye with my finger which gives me good control and it's comfortable for the patient then I'll instill a preservative-free lidocaine solution to pump up the volume of the AC. It pressurizes the eye, and that gives me better control here when making my main wound. Now, I like to make a relatively small main wound. This is 2.75 millimeters in its greatest diameter, and I like using that relatively small wound because I just feel like a larger wound just doesn't seem to be necessary. And the smaller the incision, maybe the more comfortable the patient is and the better they heal. So now here I am injecting the lens into the eye with no viscoelastic. And these bubbles a little bit make your view worse, but they don't really get in the way of the ICL being injected into the eye. And there it is delivered into the anterior chamber. And I prefer to do this with no viscoelastic. And the reason I don't put viscoelastic in the eye before I inject the lens is if you put viscoelastic in first, then you get visco behind the lens, and then you have to remove it from behind the lens, which is not easy to do. It always gives me a little bit of anxiety trying to get all the viscoelastic out, and you don't know if you've gotten it all out, and so you're fiddling around with it, and you don't know whether you're successful or not. But if you wait to put viscoelastic in the eye until after the lens is in, then you know you don't have to remove any from behind the lens. And the viscoelastic I use is a cohesive. That's ProVisc. And again, I like to use ProVisc instead of OcuCoat because OcuCoat is this vaguely dispersive. You don't know if you're getting it all. Whereas I am positive that with an EIA handpiece, I can remove all of the cohesive viscoelastic from on top of an ICL. Now here I am tucking the haptics and I'm using the main wound rather than any of the paracentesis just because I feel like it's so much more facile. Your sort of angulation, the way you can manipulate inside the eye is so much bigger through that main incision. And unless you're just reckless, you're not going to inadvertently gouge or ding the patient's natural crystalline lens. So I feel like that is so much quicker, it's so much more effective and efficient to use that primary incision than trying to wiggle in through these other paracentesis. If that's true, why do I make those incisions? Well, I'll show you in this next example. Here I am just briefly removing all of the cohesive viscoelastic from the eye using this IA handpiece. And when that's done, I'll inject 0.05 cc's of moxifloxacin into the anterior chamber. That's half the volume that I use for cataract surgery because you have a smaller volume inside the eye than with cataract surgery. You know, when you're doing FACO, you remove the patient's natural lens. You've got all this space around the IOL, down in the capsular bag. Here, there's a smaller volume, so you probably don't need as much moxifloxacin. And because sterile endophthalmitis has been reported with moxifloxacin injections with ICL. So the company actually advises against moxifloxacin injection. I feel like the risks of endophthalmitis um, militate in favor 
of an antibiotic injection into the anterior chamber, but I use a small volume so as not to get toxicity from too much moxie, if that makes sense. So here was the first eye of this patient operated in our office-based operating environment just last week. Now I'm going to show you the second eye. And remember, this video is to describe the problems and the risks inherent in injecting the lens into the eye and how you manage those problems if they're encountered. Okay, so here we go. The first eye is done. Now I'm gonna show you the second eye. Again, this is a situation of a middle-aged woman who's a high myope, but look at her pupillary dilation. Look how pitiful that is. And with poor pupillary dilation, you know it's gonna be more difficult to tuck the haptics but the other problem you'll see is it makes injecting the lens more potentially fraught. So again, I'll make these little paracentesis on either side of where I'm planning to make my main wound. So after those are created carefully, I'll make a 2.75 millimeter wound temporally. And one thing that you'll notice right after I make the wound, which is the second sign of potential impending problem, is you'll notice iris mobility. I get floppy iris in this situation, okay? So I'll bring the injector up to the wound and you'll notice when I touch the wound, when I grasp it with my forceps, the iris starts to protrude. It starts to jump towards the wound just here. I'm already getting the iris pucker and I put the injector in the wound and there again the iris sort of jumps into the wound. So I'll back that up just to show you again. As I put the injector into the eye, you'll notice the iris suctions up against the back of the injector. And now the lens is being injected. Watch. The lens gets caught up in the iris and I'm injecting it but it's not going. It's caught in the iris and I'm pushing and there it flips open. So now it's disengaged from the iris, which was caught up into the wound, and the lens is now being effectively delivered into the anterior chamber, but you'll notice that rather than opening and unfolding beautifully like you would want it to, instead it's tacoed on itself. The lens is folded in half. So what to do? The risk at this point is if you just indiscriminately put viscoelastic in the eye, the lens can unfold upside down. And if you have the lens unfolded upside down, it's a disaster. You either have to explant the lens or you have to flip it over in the eye, which is yeah, quite difficult sometimes. And so you would like here to deepen the anterior chamber and then have the lens unfold in the proper direction. Okay. What you'll notice in this image here is the lens is folded sort of like this, okay, with the hinge so to speak, on the left, okay? What that means is if you have the top of the lens flip over, the lens is gonna be upside down. So you don't want the top of the lens to flip, flip over, you want the bottom of the lens to push out, okay? Pushing the bottom of the lens out is how you unfold this lens inside the eye from this tacoed position. So I'm gonna show you how you do that, all right? So the first thing that I do is I make a little space in the eye with viscoelastic, okay? This is my cohesive viscoelastic. And I don't wanna overpressurize this eye, which is already predisposed to floppy iris. So I'm putting a small volume to give me a little bit of working space. And now I'm gonna use these two paracentesis that I created. With each paracentesis utilizing a secondary instrument. This is an olive tip manipulator used on one hand, and on the other hand, I'm gonna use a Y rod. And I'm gonna come over the top with the olive tip manipulator and underneath with the Y rod. And I'm gonna push the top portion of the lens over, and I'm going to push the underside of the lens across. So it's a two-handed maneuver to get this ICL to unfold in the proper orientation. And if you're careful and you go slow, it's actually easy to do this. It's certainly much easier to coax the lens into properly unfolding in this manner than it is to try to grab the lens, yank it out of the eye, reload it, and re-inject it, or get a new lens. So this is a slow, deliberate kind of thing, okay, in which you apply pushing pressure on top 
and a counteracting pushing pressure underneath to get this edge to sort of flip over. And as you go, if you're just sort of careful and deliberate, you can get the lens to flip over in that manner. So now we have the lens properly unfolded and it's relatively straightforward to tuck the haptics just as you would in any normal case, okay? So I think that the lesson from this case that I took that I think that is generally applicable is you should be wary about injecting the ICL in patients like this, sort of the middle-aged high myope with poor pupillary dilation because you're much more likely to get the lens caught up in the iris when you're injecting it, okay? So to be extra careful when you're injecting lenses in these patients. And if you see the iris prolapse up into the wound, stop. Do not inject the lens. Deepen the chamber. Put a little viscoelastic there if you need to, but don't inject the lens into the iris or you run the risk of entanglement, which interferes with the natural unfolding tendency of the lens. And if you get into a situation in which the lens is tacoed inside the eye, rather than grabbing the thing and yanking it out of the anterior chamber and then having to inject it again, it's much less traumatic if you think about the architecture of the lens and how you can unfold it. And in my situation, I always use, when I encounter this problem, this sort of cross-action dual instruments, the olive tip and the Y manipulator, to come like this to poke the underside and the top of the lens in opposing directions to get the lens to flip over. I think that is a useful trick to have basically in your skill set. So ICL is a wonderful, great, rewarding surgery, but it's real surgery. And whenever you're doing any real surgery, you just have to sort of prepare for what are the things that can go wrong. Injection problems, I think, is the intraoperative difficulty that most people struggle with. It's certainly the thing that we had our own learning curve with. These are the things that we have done that have mitigated those and made the surgery more fun for us.